Hello and welcome to Sculpt January number 8 and this is Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott in case you hadn't come across me before and today's episode is about Jacqueline Hyde uh, so the topic today was Jacqueline Hyde and I had quite a lot of fun with this one but it did end up taking me a good six hours, probably a bit more six hours recording time anyway uh, and usually that's quite a lot more than that so I went over the top again frustratingly uh, and uh, I'm not behind because I was slightly ahead but I was ahead for a reason because I know I'm, I'm back to college today hence the smart shirt look at me uh, and uh, that means that uh, things are going to get more stressful and more difficult uh, so I was hoping to be ahead a couple of days even and I was for a brief moment and then this came along but I did have a lot of fun um, it was overly ambitious as I always am with these things it seems uh, that's it's not a bad thing to be like that I suppose but um, it can be a bit disheartening especially uh, if you're up against time constraints and you plan to do something extra special uh, which is definitely what I've done here <laughs> Sorry. Um, characters are always going to be tough uh, so it's probably best to really steer clear of them and sometimes I sort of think Am I doing Sculpt January a disservice by spending so long? Because uh, it might seem, well, for anybody watching it, they might think, well, there's no point because people are spending hours and hours on it and I can't afford that time. And really, it should be about just uh, getting in there, sculpting, even if it's only for half an hour or even 15 minutes, just to get used to the tools, just to have a go. And I'm quite pleased to see people on the Discord server having a go, spending just half an hour or an hour uh, on their sculpts because uh, that will get you better uh, whereas what I'm doing spending a stupid amount of time that I am uh, is is good for me but it's uh, stressful as well and that can put people off so uh, don't feel you have to spend hours and hours like I have here anyway uh, onto the sculpt so I started with the skin modifier as you probably saw just there and uh, built these two characters sort of merged together it's the Jekyll and Hyde um, what is it, the book <laughs> and the film. Uh, I don't read books, uh, I watch films. Uh, I read uh, non-fiction, but I just don't read fiction, probably due to my dyslexia. Uh, put me off from an early age. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I'm rambling again. I've got to stop doing that. Uh, anyway, so uh, uh, skin modifier. Uh, links are in the description again for those things. People still occasionally ask, even though I say links are in the description and they're all there in the description. I suppose it is a bit of, bit of a busy description at the moment. I've got lots of stuff in there and trying to do affiliated links and stuff to, to make some income out of the channel, uh, which is great because uh, it is making a tiny bit of income. Uh, so I'm able to do more of it, which is fantastic. And I hope you're all enjoying it. Thank you very much for the support, of course. Uh, it's been really great. Every time I uh, feel a bit down, I just look at the YouTube comments and that does pick me up. So thank you very much. Uh, anyway, you can see I had a couple of crashes there and I've revived and I'm back. I'm trying to go a bit more stylized. So I'm doing a couple of faces here. Faces are always going to take longer and I'm putting more detail into them. Uh, and uh, that gets frustrating actually. I should have thought about this and doing two faces is going to be a problem uh, because one, my computer's not that powerful. It's pretty good, but in terms of uh, this being a career, it's not. It's still a sort of hobbyist's computer, uh, GTX 980, uh, so it's a bit dated now, and a fourth generation, I think you'd call it, i7, uh, something like that. Um, so it's not mega powerful, it's pretty good, uh, and it can handle this sort of thing, but uh, when I went to my Mobile Studio Pro to do a bit in front of the TV, I've got to relax a bit, uh, it was lagging a lot, so I couldn't quite handle it. And that's because of all the detail in both the heads. And obviously you have to go quite high detail. Someone was asking me, uh, they were confused as to why their sculpts uh, didn't look detailed. And they were saying that people are always telling him, or them, excuse me, uh, that they need to uh, keep as, as low detail as possible. And yes you do, but there's a point where you can't see the detail anymore and you need to up that resolution. Uh, and faces is somewhere where uh, you're going to have to up the resolution and reasonably early on with a face to be honest uh, because there are those minor details. That's a, quite a fine balance actually knowing when to do things like turn off symmetry and when to uh, up the resolution those come with experience and that's quite hard for 
me to uh, tell you when to do it or when not to do it. Uh, I modeled the faces separately um, from the model. That's so that I could use symmetry. So I didn't set the scale, uh, sorry, I didn't set the rotation. Uh, therefore, I was able to use the symmetry and it modeled in half the time. I had the other fiddly bits of things like hands. And interestingly, it's really important to get the hands right and the face right, uh, because those are the things that we look at the most in a model. Uh, so uh, working on hands is quite important, but they are fiddly things to do. Uh, I saw, um, I've mentioned it before, uh, Jan Sculps, and he didn't use uh, metaballs uh, for his hand. He just sculpted it straight out of his sort of blob that he had started with. So he just had a blob for a hand and, and pulled the fingers out. I find that really awkward to do. So he's uh, very skilled at doing that. Um, I find the metaball approach a bit easier, uh, but maybe it's a bit quicker to do it um, his way uh, if you are um, you know skilled at doing that and certainly uh, these things will slow you down things like the skin modifier and the metaballs uh, that you have to sort of come out of sculpt into uh, metaballs and put them all together apply them uh, or what do you call it um, mesh from curve that um, operation so all those links are in the description um, so they do take a bit of time and setup in a sense I would say to me it saves time in the long run though because working just from a blob that's the classic get your blob out thing uh, but working just from a blob uh, is really awkward and the snake hook tool is not easy to get the right angle that you're pulling out from so you you've got your blob and you're pulling bits out of your blob uh, <laughs> and I don't know why that sounds so stupid but it does there's no innuendos here uh, none of that stop it uh, so you've got your blob and you're pulling bits out of it. But with the snake hook tool, the snake hook tool, when you're pulling bits out, uh, you're trying to get the right angle and they just fly all over the place. I found that with the speed one I did the other day, you're trying to pull those sort of speed trails with the snake hook tool and that's quite tough to get it in the right direction. Uh, so that's why I prefer the metaballs or the skin modifier. You could even use the skin modifier uh, for hands as well. I don't know why I prefer the metaballs. I think with the skin modifier you get lots of glitches uh, and you have to really sort of push uh, when you get a glitch you have to sort of move one of your points so that it unglitches it's quite a strange little setup that is um, so uh, that's why I prefer metaballs because you're not going to get those glitches and they just sort of all merge together quite well and I like that so you can see me modeling the hand separately as well uh, again I needed the symmetry not the symmetry but uh, uh, to be able to duplicate them, so two sets of hands. Uh, and obviously I only wanted to build one and then uh, rig them, put them into position and then boolean them into the main mesh. So I should have thought about this before I started that this was going to be a hugely long process because it, uh, once I've booleaned them to the main mesh you still have to uh, adapt them and tidy them up really. And really I was rushing at the end of this sculpt because uh, well six hours and it's probably a good seven hours in reality because there's all the sort of research you do behind it all the um, I stop recording and then do a bit of looking on Pinterest for ideas and things like that uh, so you can imagine it's uh, uh, a bit longer than just the uh, what's what's been recorded uh, some people often say oh you, you managed to sculpt that really quick but that's with lots of breaks and uh, lots of going away and researching things so it's it's really not as quick as it sounds uh, so uh, don't get the impression that I'm this amazing artist but well, of course I am but uh, don't get the impression that I'm better than I am which is great I'll oh, stop it stop being an idiot uh, what am I saying <laughs> don't get the impression that I'm better than I am uh, because uh, when you actually start factoring in all the breaks and things like that uh, you it does add up uh, is what I'm trying to say and uh, I'm kind of working at quite an intense rate, so I'm sort of forcing myself to stay on the computer for longer and uh, try and work faster and all this sort of stuff, uh, which is not always a good thing. It sort of creates a bit of stress and actually you don't learn so well under stress according to the research anyway. Uh, teacher research there. Oh, it's all there. It's all, it's all up here. I've, I've got to stop doing these silly things. Uh, this is what I'm normally like uh, and in the lessons, in my lessons at college I'm like this as well and I just go into this sort of weird 
performance mode when I'm in front of the camera, hence why I have to do so many cuts in my um, blogs and things like that. Uh, oh dear, dreadful. Anyway, eyes. Now there's, uh, there's a bit of a debate whether you should sculpt eyes on or add them as a ball. And I was just uh, kind of running out of time in a sense and thought I'm just going to quickly sculpt them in. They can be stylized. And in some ways, stylized eyeballs, which are sort of uh, propped up and misshapen, can work quite well for cartoony type of characters or stylized characters. So you can sculpt them on. Um, but I don't know whether they work so well here, and I probably should have added more depth to the eyes for the final render because, oh, in fact, you can see there I'm finding this tricky to get because there's no symmetry to get the sculpt right and the eyeball uh, cornea, no, the iris or whatever it is, in the right place. Uh, so that is an issue with sculpting them on, especially when you've lost your symmetry. Um, and if you want them looking in a certain direction, you can't be symmetrical because if you want to look that way, they would be asymmetrical, uh, as it were. Yes, yeah, so um, eyes, uh, quite a tough one. Uh, my preference is to have a separate ball, then you can see the eye socket is um, moulded in the right way. Uh, but uh, that's for sort of realistic characters, but maybe for cartoons or stylized characters you can get away with sculpting it in. Uh, doing the cane now, I really would have liked to have uh, textured the cane better. This is all just uh, one colour and a sort of brass cane, a uh, bit of fun really. But uh, yeah, running out of time and it's not a texturing um, exercise. Uh, what, I, what I was thinking was, uh, there's Sculpt January, but why not a texturing, there's no months beginning with uh, T, well then, Sculpt January, January doesn't begin with an S, so that doesn't matter, uh, I don't know, texturing February, it doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? But I was half thinking about maybe setting one up, a painting uh, one, uh, so um, where you actually paint textures, rather than just uh, well, I suppose it could be, I'm thinking out loud now, it could be a sort of procedural texturing or whatever you fancy doing. Some people could taint, uh, paint and some people could do it procedurally. But have sort of um, topics that are uh, that lend themselves to painting, like a barrel is a classic one. Wooden barrels, uh, I love painting wooden barrels with my class. Uh, it's wood is quite nice because you've got lines and things. I've got wood, wood tutorials. They won't be in the description, but they'll be somewhere on my channel, so just search for them. Uh, love doing them. <laughs> Anyway, that's another aside, but that, I think that'd be quite fun to do a sort of painting um, or texturing uh, version of uh, like Sculpt January. I was thinking as well, in fact, uh, this was more than thinking about, I, I've started to sort of create in my mind, that's thinking about, isn't it? <laughs> oh man, oh dear. Uh, I make myself laugh as well, yeah, how about that? Uh, stop being an idiot, right. Back to it. Yes, I, I was thinking of an animation, and I, I'm thinking the month of May because animation. You see where I'm going with that? Animation. Um, so I was, yeah, I was thinking of setting that up and just having sort of really basic animations to get people learning animation and uh, testing out animations, and then just have a, a rig that you download, and then everybody can uh, try that animation with that rig, and that might be quite fun. But animations do take time; they take time to render. But now we've got Eevee which is pretty darn good. Uh, that's, uh, and sorry, that's my Britishness coming out, pretty darn good. Um, then we might be able to get some animations going, who knows, uh, it would be nice. Uh, so uh, if you like the idea of that and you are still watching this rubbish, then, uh, then comment in the, I always wanna say comment in the description. Uh, comment below is what I should say, comment below. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, or join the Discord server, chat to me there, and tell me that you would like to see a texturing, uh, texturing something February, or I think February is a bit too soon, I need a break after January. So what comes after February? Uh, March, texturing March, March texturing. It doesn't sound very good, does it? Uh, I'll, I'll figure out a cool name, because that's what I'm really good at with my Gabbit Media. I mean, that's such a clever name, isn't it? Uh, I, do wish I'd have never called it Gabbit Media because it just sounds so ridiculous and now I'm stuck with it really. Uh, yeah, anyway, I suppose I'm pretty ridiculous so it suits me. Anyway, back to this. Uh, sculpting the clothes. Uh, that's something I didn't factor in as well because uh, that Jacqueline Hyde is Victorian era I think. I'm going <laughs> to just show you my ignorance now. 
uh, probably Victorian, uh, and uh, their clothing is definitely a Victorian style, isn't it? Please say that is. Anyway, someone's going to look it up now and say, oh, actually, actually, you will, oh, I think you'll find, uh, which is fair enough. Do that for me. Uh, I quite like comments like that because it does educate me, uh, even though I feel a little bit embarrassed for not knowing things a lot of the time, especially when it's something simple. I'm sure something, somebody told me something simple the other day, and it was a blender tip. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'd completely forgotten about that. Uh, but I'm glad people tell me. Uh, it may make me feel like an idiot for a moment, the fact that I've recorded something without that happening and done something really stupid, but it's very helpful to me and it's all about growth, it's all about learning this, this uh, channel. <laughs> oh dear, this is a particularly long episode. I did put a, um, a chat thing out there saying would people rather see uh, longer sculpts um, or, well, in a sense they're not longer sculpts, they are um, just not sped up quite as much. So, uh, you get to hear me longer, uh, which must be really enjoyable for you. Uh, yeah, uh, you get to uh, understand what my students have to go through uh, every day. Not, not actually not every day, I, I'm part time, so uh, three times a week they have to go through this, me talking to them like this. In fact, it's nowhere near as bad because they're on the computers ignoring me, uh, so they're okay. Anyway, uh, back to this. Uh, shoes, I always find shoes really tough. Uh, there's the, the, the shape of a shoe, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's probably my starting point because I always think, yeah, I'll do the, I'll fill that in in a bit. Uh, and then the starting point's bad, so it takes me a while to sort of formulate it. Uh, especially after using just the skin modifiers, you just got to sort of blob, not blob again, a blob there to work with. Um, but uh, I didn't concentrate too much on the shoes. And that's something, that's a good point actually, of one good point out of this uh, today's session. Uh, looking at the amount of detail you put into your characters, or yeah, characters is a good one, a good example. Uh, you're not going to put as much detail into every aspect of the character as you are if you're doing just the character's face, in my opinion anyway. Uh, because people aren't looking, if they're looking at the whole character, you are zoomed out slightly, and that's generally what people do. Uh, so you can get away with much less detail in certain areas, such as the shoes in this case. Um, you may have noticed it uh, in when you first saw the um, the, the, fin the finished piece, which you can see on the bottom of the screen at the moment, next to me, just here, isn't it? Um, but uh, you probably can't see the shoes, and they probably look okay. Uh, but if you look closely here, uh, you can see that they're not very detailed. So do think about the detail level you need to go to. Uh, not everything has to be uh, super accurate and detailed. Although sometimes when you look on ArtStation and things, you think that is detailed, that is massively detailed. And people do amazing jobs. Uh, it, do, it, it does look better, but uh, think about your timing and what you can get away with and how much effort you need to put into certain areas. I found the clothing quite tricky actually, especially the middle part where they were joined together because I thought, well, how do the clothes work there? Uh, so I was uh, rushing as well and then thinking, what am I going to do there? Uh, so panicking a bit at the same time, um, but uh, I came up with something and uh, figured out on knees and elbows, uh, just doing a sort of C shape. So as if the elbow is sort of tucked in like this, uh, you can get away with that C shape and it kind of looks neat and tidy and works. I'm trying to figure out these shortcuts as I go along and people do these amazing stylized characters which look better than real in a strange way uh, with these minor brush strokes they just sort of uh, manage to make them work and I want to get more of that sort of style really. Um, I, I like the realism style as well and it's good to do that at the same time but actually um, getting a, a style and um, your own style, developing your own style I think uh, is something that I want to do. Uh, it's it's a good place to um, aim towards that sort of realism, trying to get r more real. But uh, to really be to have more fun, I think, is being creative and coming up with your own style and uh, expressing yourself through the forms and shapes and stuff. Uh, and that's uh, often where I see the, the that's the most compelling stuff on ArtStation, where someone you think, oh, that's clever. Uh, that really is lifelike yet so fake, <laughs> uh, the sort of stylized character. And for that you have to have a good basis, in my opinion anyway, I think you have to have a good basis in uh, anatomy and uh, general understanding. So you need to be able to do real in order to do stylized well. 
Um, that if there's extremely stylized, like low poly, uh, then you can get away with it, I think. Um, but uh, to come up with your own low poly styles, you have to understand those shapes and forms really well. Um, I think it, I'm making sense roughly. Uh, I'm kind of getting better at the clothing, but there was a lot of clothing on this, so uh, it was a tough one. Uh, and the other problem I had with this, um, I wanted the um, Jekyll, uh, Jekyll and Hyde, I'm trying to think which one's the, uh, the monster. Hyde, isn't it? No? Oh, which, whichever one's the monster. I'm going to, again, show my ignorance here. Uh, the sort of, the monstery side of him anyway, isn't it? Um, I wanted him to be bigger, a sort of more powerful character, because I think that's the idea behind the book, isn't it? That he takes this potion and um, becomes this other person who's uh, sort of the evil within, in a strange way. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I'm trying to explain something I don't know much about. Uh, but uh, a lot of the research that I did, uh, lots of people had done a sort of monster character, which is sort of um, a metaphorical, of course. But in this case, I wanted that character to sort of be bigger and more overpowering. So that side was uh, bigger. But it ended up looking a little bit um, disjointed uh, because his arms looked way too big, um, which you can probably see. Uh, but it sort of worked. I, I tried to um, have... Uh, one of the legs was his and one of the legs was the other one, <laughs> Jekyll and Hyde, uh, the, they had separate legs uh, in this case, uh, so that's, that was my thinking. I've annoyed myself here as well, I forgot to do the shirt for the monster one uh, and I'm a bit annoyed with myself because I thought, oh, do I go back and do it? No, I need to move on, I, I, I can't keep spending too long on these otherwise I will become stuck and uh, not get ahead and get too stressed and burn out, uh, which we don't only burn out happening here. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm doing better this year for coping, if that makes sense. Last year I really, uh, <laughs> it was strange, last year, uh, Scott January 2018, and you can look at all my videos, there's a playlist in fact, uh, and uh, I just decided on the 1st of January, yeah, I'll, I'll give that a go actually, I'll do today's sculpt, and then, then I just ended up doing the whole thing. And it was, it was a good experience. I think the YouTube channel really helps me to be motivated like that uh, because it's nice having that support. So I constantly had people saying, well done, keep going. And uh, you really need that. Uh, it's really, really great if you've got people supporting you around you. Uh, so if you haven't already, get across the Discord server or join a forum like that um, where you can get some feedback from people and positive feedback, a sort of safe place as it were especially if you're a beginner, uh, because, uh, well, generally people are pretty good uh, on forums. Occasionally if people ask, not, not on my Discord server, of course, uh, but I have noticed that if someone asks a very basic question that they probably could have looked up, uh, then uh, they might get laid into by a few experienced veterans of those particular uh, forums or whatever. Uh, but uh, I would discourage that in my Discord server, of course. I'm a, as you probably notice, uh, I'm a very positive person, and I, th I think it seems to attract sort of uh, positive people to the Discord server as well, because it seems a very positive place, and everybody's really nice there. Uh, so thank you to everybody on the Discord server. There's just uh, just over a thousand, I think, thousand three hundred, four hundred, something like that, uh, on there at the moment. But it is a nice place to be, uh, and of course you can chat to me there. <laughs> oh no, someone's going to meme my face again. Uh, that's what keeps happening on there. Uh, Discord server at the moment is people are memeing me, memeing me, me 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 me. Uh, they are taking my face in different angles uh, and or different stills and then uh, putting meme stuff on it. How oh, very dare they! Anyway, uh, the hair. I was rushing at this point and I just quickly got the blob out <laughs> and started putting it into uh, a hair shape and then I just copied and pasted it across for the other character and did these weird squiggles and that, that was pretty poor. Um, I, I need to actually work on hair actually. Weirdly, beard is one of the categories coming up so uh, good opportunity for me to work on hair a bit more then. Uh, but you can see it, they kind of work, these weird squiggles. I wanted them to be a bit more sort of uh, mad, out there, uh, excitable and so it had weird strands of hair which didn't particularly work well and it was quite low resolution. Uh, which I was, I said to myself, I'm going to smarten this up later. Um, but my computer started to, well, it wasn't lagging quite, but I, I was worried 
that it was getting too big a um, sculpt uh, mesh uh, to start worrying about uh, because I still had to boolean it on to the original model because I didn't want to faff around doing lots of textures for different things it would have taken too long uh, yes hopefully you're still with me if you're still watching well done congratulations give yourself a pat on the back uh, in fact in the in the in the comments say I'm still with you Grant <laughs> I'd be delighted uh, to know that people actually watch this far and my efforts at this point aren't for nothing quick hat here uh, using the uh, what do you call that the O key what is that proportional editing a very handy tool it's like sculpting but uh, in edit mode uh, using the proportional edit key with O ah oh, EV and transparencies um, so I was having the problem with reflections uh, before and it took me ages to figure out that you have to apply the reflections in no it's not a reflection sorry I had problems with the opacity before and you have to apply the opacity in the material as well as in the renderer and that was frustrating anyway there, there's the finished piece um, yes with the glass you have to apply it in the um, renderer as well as in the material so there's two places you have to apply uh, for the glass to be properly transparent I'm quite pleased with how that went uh, so uh, good stuff there. Uh, let's have a look at some people's from the Discord server. Uh, I'm sort of just uh, going through them here quite quickly uh, because I know this this video is quite long, but it's nice to see people's work. I love this one. Uh, trying to think who did this one. Sorry, I can't remember. It's really good though. Uh, well done. Uh, I can't see the names because I'm going through them so quickly. Uh, but some great work uh, with the topics of spherical. Oh, that's good fun. Uh, Double tap did that one. I remember that. That was a good one. Uh, and some tiny one there. Uh, another apple that only took half an hour you see so that's why it's nice to see people just doing it for half an hour uh, Ma Manu Hu again nice work there uh, that's a lovely one love that uh, it, it's just brilliant stuff that what well, uh, that is 2k15 or whatever it is I can't remember uh, Matthias or something isn't it um, and he's got this uh, weird thing uh, it was the nipple monster uh, scary stuff uh, some nice stuff happening a lovely one there again look at that uh, oh, that's clever on the end of a pencil like that brilliant and yeah just getting out there practicing uh, coming up with whatever uh, even if it's rubbish uh, put it up there just to show that you're taking part and you're joining in and you can get a bit of feedback from different people and that's great now uh, the speed one there coming through and uh, yep a nice face there well done uh, and oh I, I do like that model that's a really good one uh, and yes there we go so there's the final piece again uh, he said didn't have much time to say, talk about it but I, I am really pleased with this one I did some experiments with the lighting as well so I was a bit more um, experimental with Eevee uh, getting there and putting the uh, color of the lights and the power right up uh, because I saw the the guy Justin or something I think I can't remember his name uh, the person who sort of organizes Sculpt January with Zacharias Reinhardt and uh, he'd done some quite cool things with light and I think that's the way that well I'm getting the idea of how he might have done it there's a strong backlight and it creates a sort of rim effect around people that's quite cool anyway I'm going on uh, when I don't even need to now it's like close to half an hour now uh, so thank you very much for watching and uh, if you have managed to get this far well done to you and I'll see you next time